Woodstock Fruit Festival. We'll see you there, August 20th, 28th, 2012. If you get enough calories, just do have a healthy bit of muscle. Strength. Definitely helps keep you lean. So I was at a running race the other day and I've won it four times in a row now. It's a 5k race on the Gold Coast in Australia. So I've got a lot of fit people here. I've won it four times in a row. It's a weekly race. 5k and uh, won it four times in a row. Anyway, after the last time I won it, someone was saying, yeah, I've seen you, you on YouTube, mate. You're the banana dude. You're the high carb, low fat vegan dude. And uh, I've been watching a couple of your videos. It's pretty crazy stuff, but like, isn't there like an 80-10-10 diet warning? Like, isn't it dangerous? You know, once you end up like Christian Bale. Here's a picture of Christian Bale here. And that's from the machinist. <laughs> so last time I checked, Christian Bale wasn't, uh, didn't eat just fruits and vegetables to get down to his uh, machinist weight. But the reality is what Christian Bale did was starvation. So it doesn't matter what you eat. If you starve, you're going to get really... Weak. So a good indication of a dietary intake is it can it support elite level fitness? And the answer of 801010 is yes. The answer of paleo primal low carb is no. That's why we don't see a single low carb paleo primal athlete ever. Post your comments down below if you think you've seen a low carb athlete and I'll, and I'll, I'll tell you who that person is and I'll tell you why they're not low carb and I'll show you their blog of actually what they do eat. So if 80, 10, 10, vegan, high carb, whatever, if it's good enough for an Olympic athlete, it's good enough for a world class athlete, it's good enough for an elite level athlete, it's good enough for like a national level athlete, a state level athlete, it's good enough for, for people with no fitness to help build their fitness up. I always laugh when people who can't even run around the block go, I wouldn't get enough protein on that on that vegan or fruit thing, I wouldn't get enough protein. I can't run around the block, but I, I know you win marathons, uh, you guys, but I couldn't run around the block though. But I need more protein than you guys. <laughs> so a good indication you're getting enough nutrition is your fitness level is gonna be very high. If you're not getting enough nutrition, you'll have a low fitness level. And that's why you don't see any paleo or primal low carb athletes on the planet ever, never, zip, nada, can't be done. And I've done many videos on that one. So you need carbs, definitely. So 80-10-10 diet warnings, what's to look out for? What's the dangers of 80-10-10? This person was asking me, I'm like, well, the dangers are, the biggest danger is not getting enough calories. It's, it's having the old mindset of like, I can't eat too much, I'm gonna have like a little mouse meal and so you don't get enough calories. But that's not a danger of the diet itself. That's just like someone's mentality, you know, their emotional baggage coming into their new lifestyle. What's the danger? <sighs> the danger, danger, danger. You get all your nutrition, you get your vitamin A, you get your vitamin K, B12, your body produces that. If you don't produce enough B12, do a B12 shot. I do that, it takes me 30 seconds once every month, or every two months. The B12 level's always over 1,400, and uh, clinically documented, you know, all my blood tests. And I do real blood tests. A lot of people do blood tests from naturopaths and then put it on Facebook and say, look at me, I'm, I'm my naturopath, so I've got good blood. You gotta get to an authorized pathology laboratory if you wanna get blood tests and show people, otherwise it's a bit of a joke. But anyway, my B12 level's always good, vitamin A is good. So you get enough nutrition, you get your vitamin A, you get your vitamin K, and then the body produces K2 from that. So basically you get everything you need. I mean, you get your vitamin D from your sun, you get everything you need, your body produces creatine, all these B18, all these things people say, oh, but you need this, you need that. There's nothing that you can't get from plant foods that people you eat animal products for. But people say, but where do you eat your protein from? Plants don't have protein. And it's like, yes, you do get enough protein. Well, 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 what about vitamin K2? Yes, your body produces vitamin K2. You need to drink milk for calcium, Dan Ryder. Yes, plant foods do have calcium. Then I get enough B12 if you're a vegan, Dan Ryder. Yes, the body produces B12, and if it didn't, only vegans would have B12 issues, which we see over 39% of the US has a low B12 level, according to the Tufts University research data, period. <laughs> Vegans don't get enough iron! Any vegan diet based on whole plant foods with sufficient calories will definitely give sufficient iron. Creatine. Creatine's not found in plant foods, Harley. Um, your body produces creatine. Funny thing is, you go to any gym in the world and people will be pumped on creatine supplements and tell you you don't get enough creatine if you're a vegan. Funny that one. So the biggest danger would just be, there is no danger specific to this lifestyle. 
what that can happen though is people under eat. They don't get enough calories. So what happens when you don't get enough calories? You become initially you become very moody and you know just flipping out because you're getting glucose exhausted or mild glucose exhaustion, hyperglycemia, things like that. So you're gonna have a lot of issues with that. But that again, that's that's like riding a bicycle. It's okay if you ride on the right side of the road and keep your hands in the bars, but as soon as you take your hands off the bars and go on the other side of the road, you're gonna have problems and you're probably gonna go, oh, I was a cyclist and that was really dangerous. I did 80, 10, 10 and it was really dangerous. It's like, no, you had a eating disorder or whatever. You had some issues going on there that you brought into your new healthy lifestyle and you haven't really changed that. You've brought your old behavior over here. You've brought your starvation, calorie restriction, anorexic, orthorexic behavior to 80, 10, 10 and now you're fucking up and long term you're just gonna hit walls. So, the secret is get enough calories. When you get enough calories, you take care of your nutrition. When you get early nights, you take care of nutrition because you're not getting enough sleep, you're not gonna be absorbing your nutrients as well. And another thing is people forget is fitness. If you're not fit, you're not gonna get enough nutrition because you're not using your body like it's meant to be used. The body has to be fit, it has to have a base level of fitness to be healthy. I'm not talking, you don't have to run like you know sub 30 minute 10Ks, I'm talking you have to be fit. You have to be a fit person, capable of basic function. Of, you know, you be, should be able to chase your kids around and, and you know lift heavy objects. And you should have fitness. You should have fitness. If you don't have fitness, you're not healthy. I don't care how it, clean your diet is. If you're not getting the early nights, if you're not getting the sufficient water, if you're not getting sufficient physical activity on a weekly basis, you're not going to be as healthy as you can be, regardless of how clean you're eating. Doesn't matter. You've got to have those other things, the sunshine as well, the water, the sport, the early nights. Otherwise, doesn't people focus on diet, 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 and then they just have late nights on the computer having late night debates or whatever on Facebook, or they're not doing sport. They're like, I'm not into competition, I just sit on my ass on the couch and watch apathetic TV shows, but I eat healthy. Or I don't drink water because water's not natural because all you get your water from, like, Oranges and orange juice, you know, you don't need to drink water because you just drink orange juice. Doesn't work, that's that's not good. You need water. So there is no dangers, you get every single nutrient from your plant foods, from the sunshine, from your bodies produced. There's nothing in animal products that we need that we can't get from plant foods. Otherwise, there would be vegan specific diseases, which there is not, but people pretend there is. But the reality is every supermarket, every chemist, every pharmacy, every drugstore, every vitamin shop, supplement shop around the world is not vegan specific, is it? It's not. Fish oil supplements, retinol supplements, all these things, animal derived. Vegans aren't taking these things. Vegans aren't taking these things. These are for meat eaters. These are for the meat eating consumer, these supplements. The whey protein powder is not for vegans. The retinol supplement is not for vegans. The fish oil supplement is not for vegans. The shark cartilage stuff, the cartilage products. The glandular products from derived from thyroid tissue, hypothalamus glands, adrenal glands, bovine adrenaline, the brain tissue that people use in glandulars, that's not a vegan product. And they're designed to be consumed by meat eating consumers. All the BCAAs, branch chain amino acids derived from dark feathers, don't eat, eat vegan because you won't get enough BCAAs, so make sure you have your BCAAA supplement from duck feathers and eat your steak. The EPA DHA supplement derived from crude oil is not for vegans. All these products and supplements are designed for the meat eating consumer. So anyone who tells you there's a, a diet warning or whatever for if you're a vegan or 80 10 10 or whatever, that's nonsense. They're not educated, they're a newbie, they're just following bro science. You know, I'll put my blood test on YouTube. I've been vegan for 11 years, I've got blood tests, All, I've got like 6 or 7 videos now on YouTube of my comprehensive blood tests from a clinical laboratory, not some backyard quack, homeopath, naturopath, whatever, I'm not some of those people are bad people, but that's not a legit blood test, I'm sorry, if you're an Olympic athlete and you test positive for drugs, and they say, oh, what laboratory was that, and so oh, it's my, my, my naturopath did it for me, they're gonna, <laughs> that's not a fucking real test. You need to do it in a, a full-on lab, man, not some backyard job with some, you know, $300 testing machine or whatever. It's got to be full-on clinical data, can't be the backyard stuff. So hey, there you go. I'm out there, I'm winning the running races, four running races in the last four weeks, back to back, boom, 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 boom. So that's just it. So anyone that says, oh, blah, 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 it's like, look at Duran Rider, dude's fucking winning races, mate. He's fucking dominating 
he's on his little fucking banana vegan trip and he's out there, he's ridden across Australia, he's ridden from Seattle to LA. I can go out training the fittest cyclists on the planet. I've gone out training with Cadell Evans, Lance Armstrong, Valverde, whatever, that's fine. In the hills, mountains, whatever, I can do that. I can go out for five, six, seven hours with those guys and no worries, keeping up in the mountains. So anyone that says you don't get enough nutrition, it's like bullshit. I'm not even on caffeine. I'm doing this all caffeine free, drug free. I mean, on the paleo diet, it's like caffeine, caffeine, caffeine. And they're not, they can't even do a running race. A paleo athlete, an ath well, I can't even call them athletes because what are they doing? No one's doing anything. Mark Sisson's not winning anything. Rob Wolf's not winning anything. Lauren Cordain's not winning anything. Sally Fallon's not winning nothing. These people aren't even competitive athletes. And they're telling us, telling us how it is. They're com non-competitive athletes telling competitive athletes how to eat. It's like, what? How does that work, man? That doesn't work at all. And the funniest thing is, Rob Wolf, Mark Sisson, these guys were highly competitive athletes when they're eating high carb. Now they're on the low carb, they can't do squat. They can't do nothing. So it's sad to see. And just because someone's not fit anymore doesn't make them a bad person. I'm not like putting anyone down. I'm just saying fitness is a part of health. You can't be healthy if you don't have a decent level of fitness. It's just how it is. And you've got to question why all these paleo people sell all these supplement powders and protein powders like Mark Sisson. And nothing personal against Mark Sisson. I mean, I'm, I'm critical of his uh, nutrition advice for sure, but nothing personal against him. Mark Sisson sells so many supplements, and he sells the, the primal protein powder, and that's full of sucrose, it's full of refined sugar. And I was like, Mark Sisson doesn't promote fruit, but he sells the, the primal protein whey powder with added sucrose and maltodextrin. Sucrose and maltodextrin, last time I checked, that's refined sugar. Don't eat fruit because it's got too much sugar. Buy my protein primal whey powder, that's got added maltodextrin and sucrose in it, and have that. <laughs> it's like, that doesn't make any sense, but it makes a lot of dollars, I guess. So if anyone's taking a lot of supplements, it's the Paleo Primal Low Carb Crew, it's the standard Australian, standard American diet. Look at it, man. Look in the supermarkets where people are eating their meat, and they're having the protein powders, they're eating their fish, and they're having their fish oil supplements, and it's crazy. So that's just bottom line. Everything you need, you get from plant foods, or your body produces. And if anyone tries to sell you anything else, then... Be wary. Be very wary. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Post your comments and questions down below. What comments do people tell you about your diet? Thanks for watching. Peace. I don't know.